Wow, do we have a lot to talk about in today's video, guys. Uh, worst stock market we are in in over 50 years on a factual basis. Absolutely incredible. I want to talk about so many stocks in today's video. I want to talk about the overall markets, what's going on, my view on these different matters. Um, yeah, a lot to get into in today that I prepped for you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, thanks for joining me and uh, trying to make it through this tough market. So first off here, uh, everything Red Dead Redemption out there again today. NASDAQ down, SP 500 down, Russell down, Ethereum down, Bitcoin down. Yeah, it's uh, just about everything down here today. I was looking at the public count and it is now official. We now have more red positions than green positions in the public count. And it is red now at this point in time, which just shows you the extent of the, uh, I would call it damage in the market. I mean, this was an account that was in the plus seven figures at one point, if I recall. And um, to now be red, it's just, whew, I mean, <laughs> it's been nasty. And it's been nasty, honestly, for about a year for a lot of us. Um, but, you know, to everybody else, it's really been nasty for the past eight months, roughly, right? Just incredible, vicious cycle, right? Oh, that is not supposed to be in there. Uh, first thing I wanna look at here is big tech. So when it comes to big tech, Jeez, oh my gosh, okay, Shopify down again. Is that one, it like hits a new low every day. Uber's flirting with going under $20 now at this point in time. Uh, Amazon got hit again today, Nvidia got hit again. PayPal's under $70 now. PayPal, I mean, that was a $300 stock at one point in time, right? Netflix is getting pretty dang close to its 52 week low again. AMD now is down, uh, I think it's down over 50% from its high now. Uh, Tesla, obviously, well under $700 now at this point in time. Look at Meta. Meta's going to go into the 150s? Seriously? Like, literally, if the market's down tomorrow, Meta's in, in, uh, in the um, you know 150s, which is incredible to think about that stock. And, um, you know, it just makes me think, remember, JP Morgan, the, the analyst over there, he said we were going to be up 7% this week. Literally, we're on pace for potentially a 7% down week this week. It's, you can't make this stuff up, man. Just incredible, incredible moves, okay? This is very important, what I'm showing you here. Very important. JP Morgan just broke 30% plus down year to date now at this point in time, okay? This is the biggest big dog bank you're going to find out there. To see a stock like this fall over 30%, this shows you that Wall Street is very, very scared about the overall economy, right? Because JP Morgan, I mean, the biggest big dog bank out there, right? Now, the one thing I'll say about JP Morgan to kind of defend them is, you know, these banks are so heavily regulated nowadays to such an incredible extent, you know, and if anybody's worried about like the stuff that happened in the great financial crisis when it comes to the big banks and things like that, um, you know, everything's possible, but I wouldn't really worry about that. The, the worry, in my opinion, is on the unregulated side. That's the wild, wild west, which is obviously the crypto side, which is just you, we've seen what's going on there. Right. Um, but because the banks are so heavily regulated, they have to do all these stress tests nowadays. Like what if this happens and this happens and the market falls 50 percent and, you know, this many customers just stop paying their mortgage or their auto loans and things like that. Because of the crazy amount of stress tests these uh, banks have to go through nowadays, um, they're in a very different position. Never mind that the thing that no one wants to bring up, but it's God's honest truth, right? Is these banks are completely backed by the Fed, all the big ones at least, right? JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, they are too big to fail. They won't let them fail, even if like, you know, some crazy situation happened, right? And so I think that's just important to remember when it comes to banks. But at the same time, I think this is Wall Street saying that we don't believe JP Morgan's earnings are going to be good over the next year. And therefore, we just want to sell this stock off, right? Down 30% plus year to date. Bank of America, one of the other biggest banks out there, usually they're around number two, $250 billion mark cap on this one is down 30 plus percent year to date, down 32 and a half percent for Bank of America. Now, are these stocks the type of stocks that could fall 50% by the end of this crash? Absolutely, absolutely. It's not all realm of possibility. And um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens, but it's definitely not all realm of possibilities to see these babies go down 50% by the end of this thing, okay? ARC is back under $40. Every time this one wants to give people hope that maybe the markets are coming back and, and things like ARC are coming back, it just falls again. Back under 40 bucks again for ARC now at this point in time. Really, to be honest, ARC hasn't done anything in two months. It hasn't really made any more downward moves. It hasn't really made any more, more upward moves. It's just, it's doing a whole lot of nothing. Basically, the last two months now at this point in time, what 
you know, everybody's waiting for ARK to see what these earnings are for all the big ARK stocks like Zoom and, uh, you know, uh, Teladoc and all those stocks, right? Tesla, obviously, all the big ARK stocks when they report, you know, that's what everybody's waiting for when it comes to the ARK ETF there, okay? Now, you want to see something insane? This is insane. Coinbase down over 81% now at this point in time, year to date, year to date. This isn't from its highs. And this is year to date, 81% plus. It falls again today to $47 now at this point in time, another five and a half percent. Okay. And if you're wondering, when does Coinbase stop the bleeding? When does a stock stop the bleeding and maybe start going up again? I can tell you Coinbase will not go up until we get real stability in Bitcoin. Okay. When you get real stability in Bitcoin, whenever that is, and I don't know if that's like next month or three months or six months or 12 months or what. Okay. But when we start getting real stability in Bitcoin again, and Bitcoin starts to go up, but I'm not just talking about on a couple day basis. I'm talking about for like a month straight. That's when a stock like coin will start to go up again. But as long as Bitcoin continues to go down, as long as Ethereum continues to go down, Coinbase stock, will continue to go down. That's just as literally as simple as that right now. Those are the two biggest cryptos by a mile that are traded on there. And if volume just continues to leave those, interest continues to leave those. And also basically the spreads, they're not gonna be able to get as big as spreads. The, the, the higher Bitcoin was and the, the higher Ethereum was, the more money they can make in between. Basically, you know, with those continue to compress, compress, you know, and also a lot of people are just very, very fearful of the crypto space right now. We got to admit that as well, right? A lot of people are very scared because they saw what happened with Celsius. And although something like that's not going to happen to coin because coins got ridiculous amounts of cash in the balance sheet, right? People still worry about it. And they, they saw what happened with Celsius. They saw what happened in these Terra Luna situation and these other um, smaller brokerages and things like that. And they're like, I, I don't know if I want to even risk money at all in crypto. And that's the place crypto's in right now. And therefore, a coin is just in a, in a horrible, horrible spot right now, to be quite honest, okay? And this is just crazy. Carvana, this stock is down 94% from highs, roughly. I heard something, uh, I don't know if it was Graham that told me this or, or who told me this, but somebody says that they lose like thousands of dollars for every car they sell. I'm like, what? Like, I never heard about you losing money selling cars. Like, how do you lose money selling cars? Like, it's just crazy to me, right? FinTech. And so we just talked about coin, right? Almost every single one of these fintechs is very close to its 52 week low again, or not 52 week low. Almost every single one of these stocks is very close to its all time low now at this point in time, or getting really, really dang close, or it's literally at its all time low right now. Affirm, SoFi, Square, Hood, PayPal, Upstart, all those stocks, and obviously coin as well. All those stocks are like <laughs> so dang close to their 52 week lows and their all time lows. It's incredible. And these fintechs, I mean, I'll be honest, until people start feeling a little more confident about the state of the economy, these fintechs just can't move up. They cannot move up until we get a little more confidence about the state of the economy because no one wants to buy these fintechs if they feel like we're in a weakening economy. That's just literally as simple as that. You know, who wants to buy a firm if people believe the economy is going to get worse and worse and worse? Because then the thought process is, well, if the economy continues to get worse and we go into a deeper recession, all this buy now, pay later stuff, who's going to really be paying later? Okay. Uh, a lot of people just won't even pay that. Like on the list of priorities of like things to pay, right? You know, at the top is like your home, your rent, right? Mortgage, something like that, right? And then maybe beneath that is like your phone bill. Then right beneath that is like your car bill, right? Um, if you got a, you know, car loan, something like that. And then maybe after that, it's like credit cards. So like, you know, a business like a firm, that's going to be on like the last priority of people. Like if we're actually going into a recession where jobs are lost and things like that, um, and never mind inflation just continues to slice and dice people, that, that all that stuff is going to be the last of people's worries essentially at the end of the day. Like, oh, I bought a, I bought a toaster oven, uh, you know, through a firm, um, you know, and, and use that like, oh, uh, yeah, I, I got the toaster oven, but, you know, I'm just not going to pay that bill. Like, that's just the bottom line there. And so that that's an issue with fintech right now, right? RH, big news happened here today. And if you worry about the economy, this big news matters, and it matters in a meaningful way. RH is a furniture company, okay? They sell high-end furniture, and almost all, you know, pretty much all the furniture you see in my house is RH, okay? And this is a company that's on the higher end. They sell, you know, like you know, six figures, seven figures of furniture for like a, a big house is what it's going to cost for a company like RH, right? And so a company like RH is very important to understand the state of the 
let's call it the uh, wealthy, okay? And here's the deal. RH just came out, and they said, even though they had bring bringing down numbers, they just brought numbers down again. They brought numbers down again. And they said that essentially the uh, housing market is deteriorating much faster than they thought. Home sales, mortgages, all those things, right? And so RH is saying this. Now, the important part is, think about the people that are least impacted by inflation. The people that are least impacted are people with bigger incomes, the wealthier folks. That's the people that are least impacted. So the fact that you hear an RH come out and say, housing market not looking good, we're not feeling good about the state of the economy and things like that, and based upon our sales, that's really bad news. Because if the wealthy are pulling back like that, then, oh my gosh, can you imagine what's going on you know, with other companies out there, right? And so this stock hits another new low, down 10.5% tier day. And you know what else is interesting about RH? They have a buyback they just announced recently, but they're not buying back any of their shares right now, or at least they haven't so far it came out. And so what that means essentially is RH is kind of telegraphing that we think our stock price is going lower. That's why we're not buying back shares yet. I think they'll start buying back shares probably when it, if it goes to 100 something dollars a share. I think they'll start buying their, their shares back, but for right now, they're in no rush. And I don't blame them. The housing market's going to be likely a mess for at least 12 months, but I would say the housing market's probably going to be a mess for two years. And remember, you know, and I don't want to say this is going to be as bad of a housing market as we had in the great financial crisis, but don't ever forget the housing market was in a downward spiral for five years. In, in the great financial crisis, right? <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm not going to predict that we're going to be in another five-year downward cycle here for housing that's starting this year, but to, to imagine the housing market being in a tough place for at least one to two years, I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility at all, okay? And so, you know, this is why it's so important to understand these different companies and understand what they're telling you and pay attention to these things because you get great insights on what's actually going on in the economy on a real-time basis, not the government numbers that they give you that it looks back at like three months ago. And it's like, cool, I understand where the economy was three months ago. No, this is like a company telling us right now, here's our business. We're not hitting the numbers we thought we were going to hit. Our clientele's wealthy and they still ain't spending. No bueno. No bueno. They expect revenues now to go down this year. Okay. And the scary part of that is how much down, right? Because what if things deteriorate even more? If you're in a situation that's just getting worse and worse, who's to say that RH isn't going to come out in a, in a few months from now and say, you know what? It's shit. It's even getting worse than we thought it was going to get. You know, that's just, there, there's nothing to be bullish about when it comes to housing in the short term. And when I say short term, I really mean over the next 12, 24 months, mortgage rates are super high. Homes are still super unaffordable. Like, what is there to be excited about in the housing market in the short term? There's just nothing, okay? Now, the S&P posts the worst first half since 1970. The worst first half since 1970. So, you know, we've gone over 50 years without a first half of the year this bad. Which, first off, I just want to say cheers to everybody that's gone through this market. This is going to be one you're going to be able to... If you can make it through this stock market in 22, you can make it through... Any flip and flapjack in stock market can tell you that because these sorts of stock markets happen every 52 years. Okay. Uh, yeah. So if you can make it through this sort of market, you can make it through any market, man. You, nothing's going to phase you in the future if you can make it through this year, man, because these sorts of years, you don't get these very often. <laughs> Inflation sky high, the Fed doing nothing to help, and if anything, they're trying to do everything they possibly can to hurt the economy, right? You have economic worries, you got Russia, Ukraine, you have so many different factors, right? I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's amazing um, how many things we got working against the market. So if you can make it through a year like this, you can make it through any year in the stock market, I promise you that, okay? Now, in order to even begin to think about a bottom for the financial markets, there's three core horsemen, I call them, of the financial markets. And in order to begin to hope that we're going to bottom out anytime soon, you need to see these three things go up consistently for about a month, okay? Not a few trading days, not a week, like a month, okay? The first one of these three horsemen is Tesla stock. Tesla is, in my opinion, the second most important stock in the entire stock market, okay, is Tesla. And the reason this is so important is 
Tesla is not just a huge market cap, almost $700 billion, but Tesla is seen as the, um, the excitement in the big tech scene, right? The excitement in the stock market. It's seen as the sexy stock, right? And we, they, they have the products that everybody wants, right? The, the, the Model 3, the Model Y, the Model X, the Model S, they have those sorts of products. So Tesla is very much right now seen as, as Apple was seen in the, in the great financial crisis, right? Because if you don't remember, basically 2007, Apple showed off the new iPhone, right? Then we go into obviously the great financial crisis. Meanwhile, Apple's ramping iPhone, but Apple was seen as a very exciting stock at that time because of the iPhone opportunity, right? And so, um, and by the way, Apple stock got tore up in the great financial crisis. Go back and look at the charts. It wasn't pretty. From where that stock was at peak in 2007 to through where it was at the trough in 2009, it got tore up despite having the most exciting product we had seen likely in ever in human history, right? The iPhone, which was just, you know, was a game changer for not just Apple, but so many industries and so many companies, it changed everything forever, right? And so when you look at something like Tesla, that represents the new hope of the stock market, the new excitement, right? Self-driving cars and electric vehicles and everything that they got going on, plus, you know, all the robots and all the other crazy stuff they talk about. But for a stock like this, until we see a sustained rally in the stock that lasts for like a month, the stock market's not going to feel comfortable, okay? This is just a very important company on a psychological level for the overall stock market. The second of these three horsemen is Bitcoin, okay? Bitcoin is arguably the most famous asset in the world outside of gold, okay? I mean, you can go, you know, throughout the world and, and you know, say, hey, Bitcoin? And like people are going to like, no, right? They, they might not know what the heck Bitcoin really is and they might not know how it works, but they've heard the term because Bitcoin has blown up to massive fame over the past five plus years, right? We've even seen some governments, uh, you know, decide to, to, you know, use Bitcoin and those sorts of things. Now it has blown up to massive fame over the past five to seven years. And this is something that everybody looks at, right? And they say, when you want to go risk on, guess what's going to move? Bitcoin's going to move when you go risk on. And so until you see Bitcoin, not just bottom, but start to make a actual rally where it goes up for like a month, because we, what we've seen recently, and you, it's very clear when you pull up a chart of Bitcoin, right, is you can see some little rallies, some little short term rallies that maybe last for a few days, maybe a few weeks, but we haven't seen like a sustained like month long rally until you get that no one's going to feel comfortable. The bottom is just falling out in Bitcoin right now. And um, yeah, we you have to see this one continue up for a while in order to you know see an actual sustained rally in the market. The third of these horsemen is Apple stock. The reason Apple is so important is because, let's be honest, it's a company that does $360 billion or whatever in revenue a year. It's a, the biggest of the big dog market caps, 2.2 trillion plus. And, you know, for Apple, it, here's a deal, okay? I, and this is my worry about Apple. I'm, I'm worried about Apple, okay? I think Apple is going to have struggling numbers in the next few quarters. I really do. I don't think Apple's um, quarterly numbers are going to be pretty for a bit here. I think for the next two to four quarters, I really don't think Apple's numbers are going to be great. I really don't. Um, I don't think iPhone numbers are going to be great. I don't think, I, I think if anything, they're going to disappoint. And so that's scary because Apple is such a big weight. It moves the entire market. If Apple moves down, it moves the entire market down, right? And if you're talking about moving the Dow 30 down, right? And if you're talking about moving the S&P 500 down, Apple is going to be part of that. If Apple goes from a $2.2 trillion market cap to a $1.5 trillion market cap, it's going to move the entire market down. It moves all the semiconductor stocks down, things like that. And the thing with Apple is they've been reporting these insane numbers quarter after quarter after quarter for like two years straight now that it's just like, how do they keep doing this? And I just feel like we're at the end of the road when it comes to Apple and these insane numbers. And I think they're due to start to disappoint over the next couple quarters. And because of that, I think it's definitely a real possibility that the S&P 500 and the Dow can move down with Apple. Is it possible that Apple can continue to report these ridiculous earnings that shock everybody? I mean, it's a possibility. You know, you can never doubt Apple, but I just don't see it being realistic. With how bad people are getting sliced and diced by inflation, I'm just not so sure how many people are going out there right now and like, I got to go spend $1,200 on a new iPhone right now. You know, the stimulus money's not out there. The inflation slays and dicing people. I think people are more worried about like, uh, you know, 
how do I, you know, pay for this gas? That all of a sudden is like double the price that it was last year or triple the price at the gas station, right? You know, people are used to paying 2 to $3 a gallon for gas. Now all of a sudden you're paying 5 6 $7 a gallon across the United States right now. It's a whole different situation, you know. So, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see Apple's numbers being pretty for a bit here. And therefore, it's very, it's very hard to get excited about that horseman coming back anytime soon, to be quite honest, okay? Now, you know, I think the most important thing in the stock market right now is to not get your hopes up. You know, I'm mentally prepared for this stock market, and I don't know if this is going to happen, but I'm mentally prepared for the stock market to go down the entire year. I'm mentally prepared for the S&P 500 to be down 40% year to date by the end of this year or at some point this year. I'm mentally prepared for the NASDAQ to be down 40, 50%. I mean, heck, the NASDAQ's already down over 30%. I think 31, 32% the NASDAQ's already down. So for it to be 40%, like if the NASDAQ was just bad for a couple of weeks, like we could be a 40% plus. So I'm already mentally prepared for that, right? I don't think it's good to get your hopes up about anything in this market because if you get your hopes up in like, oh, I think we're going to bottom this month or this week or things like that, all you're setting yourself up for is failure, right? And we saw that this week with the JP Morgan thing. Oh, stocks are going to move up 7% you know, next week. And then here we are this week, and if anything, we're going down 7%. It's been a disaster. Every single day has been Red Dead Redemption out there. Every single day this week. And so, you know, that 7% move never... But if you get your hopes up, right... Then you're like in a situation where it's like, oh man, I was I was I was hoping we were going to get the seven percent moving, and then it never came, right? Um, and, and all we got is more devastation. So don't get your hopes up about anything in this market, and um, just be ready to be a buyer for you know at least the next six to twelve months, in my opinion. And um, that's that, guys. So, anyways, hope you enjoyed this as always. Thank you so much for joining me. Keep your head out there. Don't get your hopes up. Always prepare for the worst. And when you're in a stock market that's the worst in 52 years, that's all you can do, man. That's all you can do. And just try to make it through. Much love as always and have a great day.